How would you like to discover a single swing thought you can rely on to crush drives down the fairway and hit more greens than you ever thought possible? Hey, my name is Eric Kaplan. I've had the privilege and pleasure of coaching some of the best players in the world, and I want to transform your takeaway. So what we're going to dive into right now is how to start your golf swing. What's the secret? What's the trigger? What actually gets the club moving? And the most common thing that I heard growing up is that you want to put the club in a position called P1, where the club is parallel to the ground when the toe is pointing up. This is what people consider to be a square position. Now the issue with this is I don't necessarily disagree. The one thing coaches cannot agree upon is how do you put the club there. There's literally a million and a half different ways I can put this club in this place in space. I can get here and I can early set my hands. Now again, this club looks like it's in a great spot, but is there any turn in my body? The answer is no. I can get here and I can rotate my lower body in the first move back. Again, the club looks like it's in a great spot, but this is the makings of reverse pivoting in the golf swing and with the power loss. I could go you know, a little bit more new age, which is getting my left shoulder under my chin. And by me pushing my left shoulder under my chin causes some movement off the ball, as well as this is not really a rotation. This is a lift of the shoulder that causes the club to be a little bit more shut if I don't do something extra with my hands or forearms. So what in fact is the secret engine of the golf swing actually is not gonna come from your hands, arms, elbows, or shoulders, but rather a secret engine known as the scapula or your shoulder blades. Now, the neat thing about this idea is actually gonna force your head to stay centered. Now, in the golf swing, there's a huge difference between pushing and pulling as it relates to what keeps everything moving. By definition, a push is a movement away from center. Think about it like this. If you're walking down the fairway with your golf clubs and you're pushing your bag down the fairway, the club's always gonna zigzag. Whereby, if you're pulling the bag down the fairway, it's always gonna follow you. Pulling is always easier than pushing. Now, if I were to stand up straight, and if I were to take my right shoulder blade and pull it two inches closer to my spine, that's the makings of what a proper rotation is all about. I would not want to push my trail shoulder, my lead shoulder rather, as that would cause movement off the ball, but this action of pulling my trail shoulder back around my body is the engine of my golf swing. So I have a student of mine who's a really big, um, big guy in finance on Wall Street, and what he says to me, Eric, here what you're talking about is return on investment. He says to me, Eric, if your shoulder blade, the scapula, is moving maybe two inches around the spine, how much is your shoulder moving? I say it's moving roughly six inches. He says, good. If you get into your golf posture holding a golf club and your shoulder moves you know, those two inches, the shoulder blade moves two inches, causing the shoulder to move six inches, how far is the hand moving? My hands are moving about two and a half feet. If you're holding a golf club and making a two inch move of your shoulder blades, how far did the club just move? The answer is two and a half yards into a perfect toe position. Now, the neat thing about this, even for a guy like Bernhardt Longer, he says, Eric, if my hands, arms, elbows, shoulders work back first, that is the tail wagging the dog. If the shoulder blades work back first, it is the dog wagging the tail. The cool thing about this is this idea of scapular glide, the secret engine of the golf swing being your shoulder blades, is going to be true whether you're hitting a putt, a chip, a bunker shot, or even your full swing. It's the same engine for everything, which is why a guy like Bernhardt Longer is so much more consistent than everybody else and still is. Now, the prerequisites to being able to rotate properly, of course, is being in a better posture. So if I'm here with all this rounding of my spine, I could not create a proper rotation. It's just impossible. That's why this whole idea of primary tilt that we talked about in other videos by hinging the thighs back is so critical to put the spine in a position that actually allows you to rotate. From here, the best drill I can give you that would have you feeling this right away is what I call a one golf ball palm drill. We're gonna get into our posture. We're gonna put a ball right between the palms of the hand. Now the first thing you notice, if I start my golf swing with my hands, I would lose the golf ball. If I start the golf swing with a pushing action of my lead side, I would also lose the golf ball. If I start the golf swing with my arms and elbows, the golf ball would move. Also, if I start the golf swing with a lifting action of my trail shoulder, the golf ball would move. If I bring the club back with only my scapula or my shoulder blades, this ball is gonna stay in the same spot in between the palms of my hand. This is the best roll you could do. So what I want you to do at home, go ahead and get into your posture by hinging the thighs back, Grab just a single golf ball, let the arms hang as they would, slight engagement of the shoulder blades, and we're going to have you do this takeaway drill 10 times. And once you've done this 10 times, I want you to go ahead and grab your golf club, and I want you to do this with a golf club 10 times, learning how to isolate the shoulder blades, and what you see is everything else is going along for the ride. You know, the club's getting into a perfect toe position as a symptom 
of me getting in proper posture and rotating well. So once you've done this 10 times with a golf club, I want you to go ahead and practice making a golf swing at home. If you're on the golf course, by all means, jump on the range, hit a shot. At home, don't break your ceiling fan. I've done it before. So from here, we're gonna get into our posture, pull back, and there's my proper rotation. At which point, I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna put a ball between the palms of my hand. We're gonna do this nine times. We're gonna drop this ball. We're gonna grab a club. We're gonna feel it with a golf club nine times. And of course, we're gonna come over and make a golf swing. At which point, we're gonna repeat the process eight times with the ball, eight times with the golf club, hit one shot, Seven seven one six six one five five one four four one three three one two two one 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 one, which of course equals our magic number of 120. Why is 120 reps so important? It's the minimum number of reps necessary for us to rebuild a new neural pathway from the frontal lobe to the cerebellum. At which point this feeling will go from feeling very different to more assimilated, at which point you can practice on your own on the golf course. That's why doing this drill at home is absolutely critical. So just to recap a little bit, the secret engine of the golf swing is not your hands, as they're very whimsical, they can go anywhere. Not your arms, not your shoulders, but your shoulder blades or your scapula pull around the body. The benefit to this in the golf swing is resoundingly important. First of all, the consistency will go through the roof, not just because it's the same engine, so to speak, of your golf swing, but the shoulder blades have a single range of motion in which they could be worked around the back of your spine, which means the club is going to be delivered the same way every single time. The other side of things, by you creating a more efficient turn right off the golf ball, the coil you're generating in your golf swing will increase your club head speed greatly as opposed to using some smaller, more whimsical muscle groups. I hope that made a little bit of sense. And if you like that video, click the thumbs up button below and click subscribe. That way you'll be notified every single time we upload another video lesson like this.